we're looking for a systems integration team that could help us here, but we wanted someone that was local, someone that was going to be here in the Carolinas or Georgia that could be here at a moment's notice. So we wanted a, a team approach and we wanted people that we knew understood what our needs were and what they could do to help us fulfill those needs for the future. The benefit of everything we're doing here is by efficiency gains, keeping an operator in his work area, picking the right parts at the right time, using automation to move the parts, but the whole goal is just to make everything faster. And one of our goals is to continue to ship as fast as possible to satisfy all of our customers' needs on a daily basis. And you know, currently we're shipping 85% of our orders the same day for the day the customer asks. So, the more we can do this, the better we are and hoping reach that 90 to 95% goal in the future. We're at TNS Brass at their manufacturing and shipping site. And we were brought in here uh, as a consultant when they had built the new building and were trying to figure out how to best utilize their floor space. Their challenges were on, on one level fairly straightforward is they had a lot of very manual processes. They, they have people using what they call a skid, and it's just a small rolling platform to transport material all over both their production facility and their warehouse side. We spent time with them going through their process. Uh, the solutions we came up with involve new racks with V&A, or very narrow aisle, for the Raymond lifts to operate in to minimize their aisle space and maximize their storage. We have two pick modules, one for components for manufacturing, and this pick module here, that's for the finished goods, which is their retail packaging. And we also have the conveyor systems to move products through the pick modules here. Here in the new Building B, our material distribution center, uh, the first phase is our component picks. Um, and we're, that's what we perform here in sections uh, one and two. Um, these zones are set up so that we are picking from the high volume material from the pallet storage, and then we pick the smaller stuff from the flow lanes here. So my inventory control employees are generating a pick ticket, which will tell them what parts to pull from what locations here in the pick module. As they pick the parts, they'll put the tote on the conveyor, and the conveyor will bring the product to the next level down, and then they'll bring it all the way here to the bottom where they finish their picks in this zone, and they're placing their totes onto a skid, which will be moved up to the front of the manufacturing area before building. So the racks are divided into two halves, where half being our finished goods material, which you'll see in a moment, and then the other half is the component material that comes in from our suppliers that we're picking or moving to the assembly department as needed on each individual order. So we generate about 600 pick tickets a day, um, which are being processed between the various zones, including here in building B, as well as in building A, which is closer to the assembly department. So all this material that you see behind us is being picked and be moved up in the next 30 minutes where they'll find, do the final picks in, in, in a, another zone before it goes to the assembly department. So as material arrives from our supplier here on our receiving dock, which we now have four doors here in building B instead of the previous two we had, the material is inspected by our quality department and from there our inventory control people will move the material here into these tall racks. Um, as you can see, this end of the rack holds all of our component material. This material will either go into two different situations. It'll be a pick part, which therefore moves to the pick module, which we'll pick individually by piece, or the boxes will be moved into the racks around our assembly department, where it's back flush and, and we have a thousand items that are used um, throughout the day and night of our high volume components. So those boxes just get moved by our floor stock material handlers. But the material here is virtually everything we need to build um, and complete all the job orders that we have for our assembly department. With our new racks, we're storing pallets seven pallets high, which is, as we stated earlier, well, we're much higher than we're used to. Um, our fork truck operators now on our Raymond equipment will actually travel with the material to the top. This is a very narrow aisle environment, so our trucks follow the guided wire here in the middle of the floor. It gives our, our employees that are on the order pickers and the swing reach trucks the ability to virtually go forward and back, up and down. Our inventory control employees will follow this wire um, when they're engaged in these aisles, and it leaves about a little over an inch on each side. Um, they can move forward and back, up and down, but they cannot turn right or left. So it uh, does give them a lot of confidence when they're engaged in the aisle that they can continue to work and put other material away at these different heights without worrying about someone being in the aisle with them or hitting material that might be here on the edge. We are standing in the middle of our finished good pick module. Um, and what we do here is as our, our mid-range material, uh, material items that are justified to fill at least one flow lane, maybe two, um, we'll come down here and we store here in three different zones at three different levels. 
So as the material comes from our assembly department, the order pickers will place the material here into the pick module and our inventory control employees will be here when they will scan the barcode on the box as well as the barcode on the label and then place the material here on the conveyor which will take the material to the end of the aisle. All of our, our flow lanes here brings the material here to the center so as we're loading from the outside and, and these lanes could hold up to 10 faucets deep, uh, gravity will pull it down here to the face so it'll be very easy to retrieve. Um, again, instead of stacking the material off on a skid here and moving the entire skid of material around the warehouse, the inventory control employee's responsibility here is just to move the material from the flow lanes to this conveyor and the, the conveyor will take the material away. We have to bring the material down from the three different levels here to the ground. So the spirals allow us to just continue to load the conveyor at whatever level and it'll all exit right here to my right and out here at the end of our, our pick module. Um, that at that point, we will stack it off into five different parking spaces. And from there, when the parking space is complete and we've completed the pick assignment, we will print a document that will go to a drop ID, which will be moved over to our packing department. So everything will, was, is accurate. Um, it's, it's stacked off in order as it's moved through the conveyor, and it just makes us that much more efficient on getting product to the packing department. As you saw earlier, all of our larger faucet boxes are stored in zone A, B, C, and D. B and C and D being our, our finished good pick module. Here at the far end of the building is zone E and F, which is our high volume, possibly low volume, small parts. Um, anything that doesn't justify being on a flow lane or on a cart is moved over here. This material is stored here in these racks that you see here to, to my left. Um, that's our high volume picks. And then our low volume is here in the vertical lift modules from Modula that we put in um, at first of last year. The benefits we have is that we have integrated these Modular VLMs with our N4 WMS system, our warehouse management system. So when she pulls up an assignment on her handheld device, it'll automatically start pulling the shelves needed in all three units. So she is just going to those shelves, scanning the location to confirm she's at the right location in the VLM, scanning the part number to confirm she's pulling the right tote, or the right part out of the tote. And then she's placing it in these blue totes that she is sending down on the center conveyor line. Every one of these VLMs has 60 shelves and each shelf has 11 locations or, or totes, and, and we're putting three totes per location. So we have well over 1,800 pick locations in these three VLMs. The efficiency gains on these is the fact is that we're no longer moving all the shelves simultaneously. We're only moving the shelves that we need for every pick assignment.